What's that mean? You're fucking kidding me. Dude, that's crazy. <clears throat> oh my god, dude. That's rough. <clears throat> Oh my god, dude. Stream beats. Stream beats synth wave. Test, 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 test.
fucking course. Oh. God, I'm so bad at this game, dude. square feet of living space so the tour really shouldn't take that long <laughs> so this is the garage space underneath the fixed bed i've got three quarter inch maple plywood as the platform for the full size bed because you weigh 90 the pounds that is just you know a foam mattress from ikea and these are galvanized steel telescoping bed slats also from ikea 10 bucks each i think super cheap got tons of storage underneath the bed for outdoor gear for whatever the heck you want and then I put the entire electrical system super easy to access over here on one side you can see that you've got the charge controller for the solar panels a 2000 watt PureZine wave inverter from Renogy got the kill switch I've got the fuse box 
labeled for easy understanding of what is what. And then two 200 amp hour deep cycle hybrid gel batteries, also from Renogy. It's so much power. I've, I've never run out. And the nice thing about these batteries is that they can handle extreme temperatures, both cold and hot. The downside to them is that they're heavy as so I guess you could call this the bedroom area. There's not much to it. I built two upper cabinets over here. They're both on gas struts. You can store lots of stuff in there. I built a long bookshelf along one of the back doors over here. Looks pretty And then you have the bed. Just a full-size foam mattress from Ikea. Nothing much to it. Moving on. She's cute as fuck, dude. <laughs> so this is the kitchen space. Space? Kitchen space? This is a kitchen, this is a kitchen space. Oh, 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 oh boy. So this is the kitchen space that I intentionally built with lots of storage in mind. And it also doubles as the control center for all the aspects of the van. You've got the thermostat for the Webasto heater, as well as two different dimmer switches for the puck lights both in the front and the back by the bed. You've also got the switch for the inverter and the max air fan remote control. All of this is accessible from bed, intentionally done that way. And then mounted to the butcher block countertop is where you'll find your AC outlets as well as USB ports. So I built these so two simple. I love it. for food storage. And then down below, you've got a bunch of drawers <sighs> for pots and pans, utensils, things like that. When I started my van build, I had no prior experience. I had no idea what I was doing. So to get myself started, I decided to just order some IKEA kitchen cabinetry. So that's what that is over here on this side. Simple. Like the it. retro style mini fridge made by Daewoo is located underneath the bed. It's not 12 volt, but it's plugged directly into my inverter and doesn't seem to draw a lot of power at all, which is super nice. I can fit a lot of food in here. The only downside to it is that it doesn't have a freezer. I opted for a larger size sink. It's stainless steel, it's made by Rivadi, and I've been really, really happy with it. I'm able to do lots of dishes, as well as keep tons of produce in the basket compartment. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it more. And then underneath the sink is where the five gallon fresh water jug is, as well as a seven gallon tank for gray water. Also under here is where I've got a recycling bin, a trash bin, and then a little section for a dry composting toilet, AKA a five gallon. It gets the job done. For you. Last but not least is the front cab area. There are two different overhead storage compartment sections, and there's also storage in the dash and underneath the driver's seat. I also added in these blackout curtains for a little bit more privacy. And then you'll notice behind the driver's seat is where I installed the Webasto heater. It's an Airtop 2000, and the fuel line is connected directly to the van's gas tank. I ended up only installing one swivel seat. It's on the passenger side, but you could easily add a swivel seat to the driver's side as well. I think this van is kind of perfect for just one person. You could manage two people, but you'd have to like each other to a disgusting degree. <laughs> I don't know, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm really getting down to the wire with this one. Uh, talk about a last chance van tour. Today's my last day with the van. A couple of things I forgot to mention that are probably fairly important to a van tour video. I have 400 watts of solar panels on my roof and I also have installed a DC to DC charger. These are the two main ways that I recharge my deep cycle hybrid gel batteries, aka my house van batteries. A couple other things that I think I forgot to mention were for the cabinets and the drawers. I have different locking mechanisms to keep things from flying out when I'm driving. So the cabinets have this magnetic baby lock system and then the drawers just have your pretty typical drawer catches installed on the inside of each drawer. You've got the max air fan, you've got some hooks to hang towels and what have you, a smoke detector, I already took the fire extinguisher out. It's a really basic build. That's all I have to say about that. You can go crazy fancy or you can keep it super simple. I did the latter. As far as cooking goes, I just used a portable butane stove, camper stove. It worked out really well for me. It didn't take up a lot of space. I've been happy with it, you know? Wow. It's just hitting me that this is my last day in this van. This is weird. Uh... <laughs>
So if you're one of the people who skipped forward during the sponsored portion of this video, you probably missed me talking about why it is I'm selling this van. The reason that I'm selling this van, yes, I just called you out. The reason why I am selling this van is because <laughs> I want to upgrade to a 4x4 rig. I've had this Ram Pro Master for three years now. It's front wheel drive, which is better than rear wheel drive, but it's not 4x4 capable. And I'm ready to hit trails and mountains. <laughs> that looks amazing, that dude. That's so cool. Only. I love this lifestyle. I want to keep doing this lifestyle. But I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something different. And I have to pee. Over it's back. time. The two pieces of advice, the biggest things I can say to anyone who's even remotely interested in, in trying something like this. Two things. Number one, the perfect time to start is never going to come. It's just not. So you just have to get started. And number two, the perfect van does not exist. It just doesn't. There's always going to be something, and the longer you're on the road, the more likely you're probably going to experience a breakdown or getting stuck or some other wild adventure that is unexpected, unplanned, and creates uncertainty and unknowns in your life. So if that's not your jam, <laughs> good luck, my friend. Yeah, no, I'm totally okay with that as long as you can make a note in, in it that the vehicle has been sold and yeah, as long as the policy is suspended and all that, that that's perfect. Cool, thank you. And then I'll just give you a call. I'm, I'm pretty, you know, as long as it's all universally aligned and things like that, um, I will call you as soon as, you know, the transaction goes through. Uh, Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely, you know, counting on that Toyota reliability type thing. <laughs> Bro, I can't, I don't, I don't know how to do this. Like, it's, it's not that hard. You got some cabinets, you got a bed, you got a bookshelf. Move on. Ah, that is so loud. I don't know about this whole van tour thing. It is impossible to do this in one take. And my jaw is clicking like crazy. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put that in for free. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, uh, I don't know what else was I gonna say. I don't think I would be good at this by now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss this thing. But at the same time, too, I'm, I'm mean, totally subbing to her, dude. Because I'm ready. And when you know. Anna Uncharted. I love that. I love the Anna Uncharted part. I guess she quit. <laughs> but she said she wasn't gonna. This is really not good. I slept here last night. It was Sunday, so nothing was open. Man, I can't believe you live out of here. And trying to get authorization for a warranty repair. But if it's not and it's something else, then it's on me. Like, I'm really grateful that my engine didn't seize before I got here. Right. What we're going to need is uh, to get started. As I'll get some information from you to be able to provide you a claim number. Sometimes when you're just knocked down so many times in a row, you start asking yourself, like, is it worth getting back up? Oof. That's a scary concept. Oh, man. What happened?
Starting route to Savannah. After a week spent in the woods near Forsyth, I was ready for a change of scenery. So I thought I'd go back to a place I once knew well. I was curious to see what, if anything, had changed since I was last there years ago. Driving east on I-16 towards Savannah reminded me of the time my dad was taking me down this highway for what was supposed to be my first year of college. But more on that later. In those three hours from Forsyth to Savannah, I just wanted to throw it back. I travel the world and the seven seas. And dude, that's me in the car for sure, bro. Weekly videos about van life. Screaming. While you're living van life, at least for me, is how it can be at times to plan out a good quality video ahead of time. This video is unlike any video I have ever made before. This was supposed to be a van life vlog set in the city of Savannah. But it turns out that is not the video that was meant to be made this week. Now, I thought about not sharing these events. I am ahead on my videos at the moment, so I could have pretended like none of this ever happened. But I learned a lot from this past week, and I hope that by my sharing my experience, I can provide or give a fuller picture as to what van life actually is sometimes which is not pretty not pretty at this point in the story i have no idea what is coming i am feeling good as driving singing anna is just doing her thing it was the start of my second week being back on the road and for those of you who have been watching for a while now the best way that i can describe how i was feeling was just this overwhelming sense like maybe just maybe I was finally coming out of that rough patch that I had been in all winter long baby Life goes on. <laughs> what a sweetheart. That uh, night, I ended up camping out at the back end of a cracker <coughs> just outside of Savannah. As you do. I left a little too late in the day. The sun had set fast, and I already knew it was going to be hit or miss on places to sleep in the area. But that's life when you live out of a van. Some days, you're going to wake up to the sounds of semis and street noise. But honestly... I'd take that any day of the week over mm -hmm. what happened to me next. Good morning. It is a little after 6 a.m. I am currently parked in the Meineke Auto Repair parking lot. Yesterday when I was rolling into Savannah, Georgia, my check engine light came on and I <sighs> took my van to Auto O'Reilly to get the code red. And I've never seen this code before. It's related to oil pressure. I'm like, hmm, that's really interesting because I just had work done on my engine because of an oil leak. I looked underneath my van. This is really not good. And there's just pools of oil. <sighs> so I, I bought four quarts of oil at Auto O'Reilly and poured it into my van checked underneath the van it's just pretty much dripping out as fast as i'm pouring it in it feel it felt like it is now monday morning and i just hope someone can help me <laughs> uh i just have this sneaky suspicion that something didn't go right with the repairs that i got done at the other meineke up in wisconsin because to have my oil cooler replaced and the oil changed and coolant and spark plugs like oil cooler. this haven't had 
A full service. That's a thing. Cost me seventeen hundred dollars. What's an oil it's cooler? Less than a month later, and. <sighs> What's an oil Don't cooler? Can help me here. I hope that I can get a tow truck to a different location, and they can help me. Everything is so up in the air, so I do recognize that this isn't. This isn't I had no meant. idea that was a thing. Um, I'm not in a a dangerous life situation. My van is fine. I am fine. I'm not in an accident. I still have so many things to be grateful and thank you because by chain smokers, vapors, the stench of oil, and exhaust fumes. That <clears throat> is my reality. I tried to write and edit and work on this video and cook my meals while my van sat dismantled for days. I slept three nights in the lot until I near ran out of water and food and clean clothes. Also, I really needed a shower. I was finally sent over the edge after one too many days of being called sweetheart and having words by Bruce Lee quoted at me. So I booked a hotel room, cost me $200 plus tax for two nights and $40 on Uber rides to get to and from. At some point, I found myself asking, all of this because why? Turns out the mechanics up in Wisconsin didn't install my oil cooler correctly the first time. So this tiny two centimeter rubber O-ring never properly sealed in place. The universe certainly has a dark sense of humor sometimes doesn't it? It's up for debate as to who said it first, whether it was Alan Saunders or John Lennon. But either way, they both once said, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. I spent all week perseverating on the choices I had made that led me to this moment to being stuck and stranded with a broken down van for five days, all alone, on my own, dealing with people I would have rather never met. I remember intentionally making the choice to get my van serviced Jeez. when I was still in Wisconsin and not on the road. So this exact situation wouldn't happen. But no matter how hard or how many times I try to control the narrative and direction of my life, the reality is, I can't. All I can do is make the best decision based off the information I have at that present moment and see what happens next. Isn't that all any of us can do? This video has been one of the most challenging to make and edit. I'm not exactly sure if I'm Very doing it justice. Also, it's kind of. I love that name, Anna Uncharted, though. I tried this saline stuff tonight and like it's like a pressurized thing and it really helps me breathe like it's insane how good it is but like it's coming back right now I can feel it like I want to sneeze right now but I'm like it's just hard fuck I have fucking hate being sick bro I hate it with a passion I love this stuff, man. I love this. I love this kind of life. This is why I want to do a side gig for this. <laughs> Here's my family. Stupid. Rub up your engines. <laughs> well, I was reading this article in Van Life. It's pretty interesting. This couple fixed up a van. In 2021, they bought a Mercedes Benz Sprinter van. Expensive enough as it is. But then they spent an additional $105,000 to turn it to their home. And what did they find out? That they were actually paying as much or more rent that they would have paid in a major city traveling around over all the fees of where they had to park, not even including the fuel that they're buying. You know, you can buy a lot of fuel driving around those things. And of course, as anybody who's ever driven one of those things around found out, most places, they have the advertisements. There's it's a beautiful 
van or camper looking at the pristine <laughs> lake, right? And you're the only ones there. No, you're parking at the campgrounds with everybody else, with the barking dogs and the whining <laughs> children, right? You're not out in the wilderness all by yourself. You ever look at any place you're driving out and say, no parking here, no park? You can't park by the lake in your van and look at it. You got to go to the campground where everybody else, you got to pay money for it, got to have hookups, there's all kinds of fees. Turns out they end up spending 3500 bucks a month traveling around in this van, right? And they said, I quote, our monthly costs are pretty comparable to what we were paying for rent in Boston and New York when we were living in those cities. So, you think it's going to be cheap living in one of these vans? Mm -hmm. Not anymore. So, what happened in the long run? Well, guess what? The couple decided, well, so much for this, they moved back into a normal home. They gave up living in their van. I mean, come on now. That's a married couple, right? You're in a house with your spouse, right? Things get crowded. It is warm. If your ignition timing is off, the engine will clean. Uh, oh, my God. Jesus. to finally review the uh, ProMaster van build that we did. Um, not only because we want to show off all the hard work that went into making this uh, and, and how well it all worked out months on the road, uh, but also this is for sale now. So if you're watching this video, uh, this van is for sale as you see it, and we'd love to uh, take some offers on it. Uh, so first off, uh, what van is it? It's the Dodge ProMaster. It's a 2021. We bought it brand new. Uh, so this van, although it has um, been used a little bit, still has uh, its full warranty for the drivetrain, which is, I think, a huge bonus. But yeah, this is a brand new van. It's the 159 inch wheelbase model. Uh, we picked this van because we thought it would be easier to manage in tight spaces, park, uh, drive in rough weather. And all of that ended up being true. So it's front wheel drive. It has an extremely tight turning radius. For example, uh, we also have the uh, the Sprinter van behind us. Uh, this van turns much tighter and is significantly easier to park than that one is. So that worked out. Almost everything about the exterior of the van is stock, uh, with the exception of the fact that we obviously added things like the awning. This is a custom install. We can take a look at it in a little bit. The whole rack of the van, the roof rack of the van, uh, I custom built out of 8020 extruded aluminum. So I custom built the rack and it's, and it's mounted with stainless steel fittings directly to the factory mounts of the van. It's holding all the solar panels and it's got an elevated channel that holds the awning itself. Uh, cool thing about the way we did that is you can actually deploy the awning with the side door open because it sits up high enough. The awning itself, you can see here, it's the Fiamma F80S in titanium. Uh, we went with the manual crank on this uh, just to have less stuff to have uh, to potentially break on it. Super easy to just roll out. Uh, I custom installed the uh, the post mounts onto the van. So although you can actually run this out and stake it to the ground, it's much easier just to attach it right to the side of the van and you can adjust the arms to get the angle you want uh, and it does its thing. Underneath the awning, we've got the addition that we did, which is I installed a uh, sliding glass window with a screen on here. Um, this is important because there's a fan inside, a max air fan, and that pushes a ton of air. You have to have an equal volume of air available to really push that through. And it's at the opposite end of the cabin from where the fan is. So uh, this van stays very cool. It stays Wherever you're at, it's as cool as shade would be in here, which is great. The window itself looks sick. It's just a one piece 
glass with the slider inside. You pop that screen out, you could have a little taco serving station out of here if you wanted to. Uh, so this came out really nice. I don't think uh, if a factory had did it, it, it would be any better. Uh, so that's the window. So on the other side of the van, you get to see something that took an insane amount of engineering and effort to pull off, uh, but I'm extremely proud of. And that is the custom rack that I built. I extended it on the uh, driver's side a little bit to accommodate the largest Yakima space box you can possibly get, or rocket box. Um, this adds a ton of extra secure storage. So this thing is relatively aerodynamic, totally secure. You can fit tons of stuff. You could honestly fit a small family into this thing. It's friggin' huge. Um, I got this thing used, but I bought and installed brand new updated spring hinges on it. It's got uh, good working locks and latch on it. And uh, we get to it with this extendable telescoping ladder that's super easy to pull out the back and run up. The benefit of doing this, instead of having a ladder mounted to the van, one, the van stays uh, more aerodynamic, which is better for fuel economy and top speed. Also, your stuff's more secure because if the ladder is locked up inside, how is someone gonna get up to your box to break into it to steal your stuff? So this has been a great setup for that. And uh, here, come along with me and I'll show you what it looks like up top. So easy and secure as you come up. And as you can see, tons of storage in here. It's really easy to get in and out of. Those are the updated spring hinges, much more reliable than the weird parallelogram options that originally came with it. Let's talk about the beginnings of the solar system. So up top here on the custom aluminum extruded setup, again, the 8020 aluminum rack. There's plenty of room back here in the storage or the garage. If you want to run bikes, uh, which we have done for Ava, uh, you can run a bike front to back here. Uh, my suggestion for this van, unless you're living in it long term and, and worried about your bikes, I would put a hitch on here and put a bike rack on it and leave all of this space open to you. I do want to point out there's no hitch on this van. That's good news for you if you're thinking about buying the van. That means you know the van has never towed anything. So transmission is choice, okay? Now, let's start with the water system. We've got a 25 gallon uh, tank of water in here. And what I've done is just, you know, pipe that all with proper PEX fittings, running it through a C-Flow uh, pump with a little bit of a filter strainer. And this is what powers the sink. Super simple, there's nothing extra. This van does not have a hot water heater that could easily be added. Um, but one thing that's important to note with this van, if you look over here, this van is 100% electric. I keep talking about the insulation and I'm going to uh, for the whole video. We kill matted the uh, wheel wells. Uh, and this is a sound damping insulation that helps keep the van uh, quiet when you're driving. Uh, this is also lining all of the doors, all of the open exposed steel panels are kill matted and have the insulation that we talked about. From, front, uh, from back to front, you'll see I've got a little utility light here, battery switcher, and then all the electric. Everything is fused and on breakers. The 110 that's coming off of the uh, inverter, which is a 3000 watt inverter, I have a proper house style breaker panel for. Uh, and that breaker panel runs um, some 110 uh, plugs up front so you can plug in all your laptops and everything. Uh, also, uh, there's, the breaker is for the inverter stovetop, which we'll show you. If you know anything about lithium ion batteries, you know that this is a pretty sweet setup. So these are Battleborn's 100 amp hour batteries, three of them. This is enough if the van is fully charged. You could operate this van for three, maybe even five days with no sun as long as you got that full charge. To charge it up, we've got the uh, Renogy uh, MPPT uh, solar charger that matches the panels. And if you've got direct sunlight, these things charge super fast. Uh, for the inverter, uh, this is the 3000 watt Renogy. It's got plugs up here so you can charge laptop uh, you know, from the bed if you want. Uh, there's a remote switch to operate this up front, and that's actually the only way uh, we ever turned it on or off. And uh, 3,000 watt sine wave is enough to uh, power everything in this van easily. You got yourself a little 12 volt fuse panel and uh, lots of grounding. Okay, so expanding on the charging systems here, you've got two. You've got a ton of solar, 400 watts of panels. 
pushing into these 300 amp hour uh, batteries. And then we also have the LiBIM uh, battery isolator. The, this particular isolator is specifically designed for lithium batteries. And so it runs on a 15 minute cycle it on it charges for 15 off for 15. It does that to keep from exploding your alternator. These lithium batteries can take so much charge so fast that if you didn't have that, you could literally just roast your alternator. So that's been great, it protects it. If you were uh, trapped in the dark for days on end and ran out of juice, just start up the van and top the batteries off that way. Okay, last thing for the back of the van, obviously we're gonna go inside the cabin and look at the uh, bed frame, but I wanna show, I built most of the bed frame out of 8020 extruded aluminum, same as what we did up top. So if you're interested in buying this van, this aluminum is gonna allow you to expand uh, on the build if you want very easily. So you can buy fittings on Amazon uh, for 8020. And if you wanted to add panels, sliding doors, additional storage, uh, you can go nuts with it. I built it so that the framing actually presses out into the sidewalls of the van and rests on this two by 12, or I think it's a two by 10 support that's resting on more supports. The bed is insanely secure and fairly easy to expand. And in fact, there's so much room up here, you actually could jam a queen size mattress in here as long as you shorten the length of it down to uh, like 70 inches. Um, One of the many uh, big projects that were must-haves for this van is the uh, screen. Uh, the screen has rare earth magnets uh, running down the middle as a divider, so getting in and out is as easy as spreading it. Or honestly, you can just rump it. You just come out and back it out with the booty and you're out. Uh, the screen uh, does a couple of things. Keeps the bugs out, which is great. It also helps keep your pets in, which is great. So the screen, not only is it easy in and out, it can actually be unzipped very easily rolled out of the way and then you just you have nothing so if you don't want that uh, the screen though retains the size the space of the full sliding door which is great come on in all right so let's start with the cab okay so first thing you're going to notice is i'm sitting in a seat that's facing backwards um, this is massive for just opening up the usable space of your van uh, it's really easy to rotate. Uh, here's the handle, pulls it around, full 360. So it doesn't have to face all the way back. You could also sit sideways. Um, it's important to note that not only did we install the slider, we also installed a seat lowering kit. So the driver's side does not swivel and yet they're both the same height. And that is just to make sure that the passenger is nice and comfortable. Uh, you could easily install a swivel and a lowering kit on the driver's side as well if you want. The reason why we didn't do that is because there's so much kitchen working and storage space back here. It just felt smart to leave that open. Um, while I'm in the cabin, uh, as far as a ProMaster build is concerned, or just a ProMaster van, uh, uh, you know, as it is, I'm just gonna give you my opinion on the overall driving uh, comfort of the van. Uh, it's got tilt wheel, cruise control, the stereo controls are really nice, touch screen. You can operate volume and, and advanced tracks off the steering wheel, which is great. Um, we put a new windshield in here, so <laughs> should have you know, great uh, visibility. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. The sound system is nice. The cruise control works great. Um, there's USB charging, you know, to run your phone. AC pumps out. There's not much to say other than it just, it all works and works good. The mirrors are huge, which turns out to be a benefit one, and you can see everything alongside you when you're driving. And if you're gonna add a hitch and, and tow with this, uh, those I believe are wide enough to be legal uh, for tow mirrors, which is a nice add-on. All right, so since we're still in the front of the van, it's a good time to talk about the Wabasto heater that we installed. So if you're not familiar, the Wabasto is an air heater where it pulls fresh air and exhausts all underneath the van. So no exhaust and no risk to you inside of the van. And it's actually running off of the gasoline in the gas tank. So uh, you can run this thing for weeks and not have a problem. It's got a very low consumption rate. And just to be clear, this isn't a China knockoff. This is the high-end Wabasto. So it's actually controlled with a rheostat knob up here on the side. And it's as easy as on and off by just turning that knob. And once she fires up and starts pumping uh, heat out, this vent, you can rotate 
where you want. And then I just custom made this little panel here and it's all back there. It's quiet. You barely hear the motor uh, whirring. And uh, the heat that comes out is not only enough to make it hot inside of the van, it's important if you're looking at buying this van and you live in a colder, wetter climate, it actually dries out the inside of the van. The way that it pulls fresh air over the heat exchanger, it actually dries out the entire van. So this is a great station to dry your wet clothes. And this is why this van doesn't have a mildew problem is because you got this dang heater down here drying it out. Okay. Okay, before we leave the cabin, <clears throat> one of the things that I was so appreciative when we bought this Jeez. van is it already came with a headliner storage setup. Um, in our other van, I had to build this myself and it was sort of a pain. So yeah, just a lot of extra storage up here, which is great. Um, and it's uh, insulated. So one of the things when we built this, when I installed the uh, cedar uh, ceiling, which obviously is insulated heavily above. I also pulled back and put in kill mat and insulation here to help try and keep the van uh, cool when it's hot, uh, when there's a lot of sun, but also quiet when you're driving. All right, so before we get into the whole kitchen, I want to explain, since it's just sitting here, this table. Uh, this is a Lagoon table. Lagoon is, is famous for making these articulating arms that you can build a custom table for sailboats. And I know a lot of van builders use these now. Uh, we've got a little bit of a unique twist that I want to show you on here. So, uh, Momski used it prime, like 100% of the time here in this location, and she liked it because it allowed her to, uh, it complemented her cooking. It was more counter space for her. Uh, if she had a lot going in both burners, she could actually rotate it away and create separate uh, counter space up here. Uh, if instead of cooking, she was just doing some projects, folding laundry, whatever, uh, this opens up into a larger table and is again just all this additional workspace what's extra unique about this table and by the way i made the table out of poplar and it's sealed real nice and it's got a good uh stainless hinge on it my man but what's unique about this thing is he's just, he dude he's he's in depth bro he's like all in it i'm impressed When Sydney Sweeney got the by a spider and everyone thought she was acting. Sure. So we're filming and then the thing just starts biting me, but we're in the middle of the scene and I'm supposed to be screaming. Actor out there. Cut. So I'm just 